Welcome to Brown's Rod and Custom, your home for street rods, muscle cars, and Volkswagen content. This is my dad, Big Ron. He's our body man and fabricator. This is my beautiful wife, Megan, our editor-in-chief and supporter. And this is me, Adam, the designer and mechanic for our projects. If you find our videos helpful, like and subscribe for more content. Hey everybody, welcome back to Brown's Rod and Custom. Wanted to uh, ask you guys if you could do me a favor. Um, if you're watching these videos and, and checking out the channel and you like what you see, if you guys could hit the subscribe button for me, we would really appreciate that. Uh, we are working our way to trying to get monetized so that we can build bigger, better cars and more builds and so on and so forth and keep doing this. And uh, that would help us a lot um, if you guys could do that for us. So. Um, that's really all I got for you. Really appreciate all of you. Stay tuned. We've got lots of cool builds coming. Lots of things starting to happen on a lot of different cars. So it won't just be the thing. It's going to be the thing, the 40 Ford, the Apache. There's going to be a lot of things happening. So just stay tuned and uh, I will try my best to get you as many videos as I can, uh, including Don's 1957 Chevy two-door post uh, that we're working on. Uh, there's a lot going on over there too. So Stay tuned guys, thanks for everything, we really appreciate you. Have a great night. Hey guys, welcome back to Brown's Rod and Custom. We are back, we are back in town um, with really no plans of going anywhere else for a long time. So, uh, we are going to be getting back on these cars tomorrow, uh, starting on the thing, uh, the 73 Volkswagen thing. Um, getting the door sanded down, uh, re-cleared, painted, whatever we gotta do. Um, I apologize if I sound a little weird. I got a little bit of a cold. I'm at the back end of a cold I got in Paris. It was actually like 50 degrees there and kind of chilly. But uh, <coughs> we, um, we're we cleaning up today. Um, Hurricane Helene came through while we were gone. Um, actually, there was a little bit of damage. Nothing, nothing to the cars. Cars did fine. Um, we had some tree damage. Um, or tree limbs down, that kind of thing. One of them hit my dad's camper in the back, but it's fine. It just bounced off of it. Um, but yeah, it, uh, we did go, I did go down to Palm Harbor today. Um, dad had a doctor's appointment and we took him down there and we ended up, the, the appointment was canceled. We just didn't know it because we were in Europe and um, when they called us. But we, uh, we drove through down there in Palm Harbor, for those of you who don't know, is right, right by uh, Dunedin, uh, Clearwater Beach, right there. Um, so, so basically what happened is, and for those of you that know Florida will know US-19, it's the major coastal road that runs right up. And so on the Gulf side, everything from US-19 basically to the Gulf of Mexico on that side of 19 um, was under water at some level. Uh, most of it was under five to six feet of water from what they're telling me. Um, we drove through the neighborhoods down there, a couple streets, um, and it's just terrible. Um, the houses, I mean, they look like this, but like the garage doors are buckled in. But what happened is everybody their house was full of water right everybody's house like every single house was full of water and there's no way to stop it from getting in and business and so on so outside of every house where you would normally put your garbage can is all of the ruined furniture and uh, belongings that they have and what has also happened is because you can't get very very few chance have a chance of actually getting uh, a contractor at this point uh, because of the level of this um, to come in and help them so what the owners of the houses are doing uh, of all shapes and uh, sizes and ages and everything else are basically cutting waist high the drywall from the waist down um, cutting the drywall out of their entire house um, on the first floor and the reason for that, in pulling the insulation out and everything else, is with our weather, it's so hot here, 85, 90 degrees, and very humid still, um, 
you get mold fast, right? And I was down uh, when Irma hit Fort Myers. I was there. And I was running a hotel down there, home to suites by the airport. And, um, I mean, it reminded me of that. Like, you would drive down any street in Fort Myers, and it was just piles of, of shit right there. Um, so they're taking all that drywall and insulation. Everything's just out in the yard. And supposedly, I guess the county or city or whatever will come through and pick it up. I mean... I don't know how they can possibly get it done in any reasonable amount of time, but <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, you would need a, you would literally need a backhoe or a bulldozer to come in and just do scoops of trash and put it into a, a dump truck. And you probably need to do one street, just one street. Like if you had to do this, you would probably need 15, 20 dump trucks minimum um to get this done in a day right so and you figure there's how many streets in florida right <laughs> on the water it's, it's insane but um anyway yeah we were over there in paris and didn't realize how bad it actually was when it hit um there wasn't a lot of coverage on it over there and uh spotty wi-fi and everything so when we got back we we're like oh shit um but good news Cars are good, house is good, uh, campers are good. We did have one branch came down and hit Ron's uh, camper in the back, um, but he's good. It didn't hurt it. Um, let's see, we got these big ass trees here, right over my fifth wheel, and uh, you know those branches there that broke fell down. And here's Ron's truck camper. And it hit there. Here's some of it over here. Not a lot, but, you know, we lost some branches and some things came down. And the neighbors got some out there. And you see this scenes like that all over the neighborhood. But we're a good five to six miles from the water. So we didn't get, they still got 80, 90 mile an hour winds. And they still got just an incredible amount of rain. But you didn't have the surge, right? So, <coughs> sorry. And that's what really kind of screwed people at this time with this storm. So, anyway, I've got the Apache. She's looking all pretty for those of you that love the Apache. I've got the windows open, or window, and uh, it's all dry inside. She survived well, so she's doing good. I've got the Chrysler took the cover off of it. It had a little water here and a little water over there puddled up. I got that cleaned up and dried out. That way we're not sitting under rotting away. Um, still, I need to get this off. Like, desperately need to get this off um, in order to get it primed. That way it doesn't just rust away. Um, but otherwise, it's doing fine. The 73 Volkswagen thing, I fired it up it's um it was actually uh, backfiring a little bit popping and banging and i just didn't have time to mess with it but it hasn't run in two weeks and you know i'm still debating i really feel like i need to get a one of those uh what are they the flamethrower electronic ignition with the uh vacuum advance feel like I need to put the stock jet back in the carburetor, the stock main jet, and or idle jet, and um, switch out this 009 distributor, because I know if I put the stock jet back in, I'm going to have a flat spot, it won't run for, for nothing. Um, but my problem I've got is, on a cold start, fires right up. Well, Okay, you leave it sit overnight, man, this thing cranks right now, boom, fire, uh, which is great. You drive it at all, and it gets the fuel pumping through it, and then when you go to try to restart it, um, you know, say you went to a gas station, for example, right? The only way to get this to actually fire off after that um, 
to start is to basically hold the pedal to the floor and then it'll fire puff black smoke and you know things and then it clears out and it's fine um but i don't want whoever buys this to have to deal with that so right now i think that could be my my issue just go back to the stock jets on the carburetor and um switch out that distributor which isn't the end of the world um I just really don't want to do it but I might just do it just to make it right but uh, I think that would fix it I really do um, so that's a that's on the table um, 44 it's good we came back with a little puddle of uh, tranny fluid under it um, like I told you before we left we got the wrong dipstick uh, so Ron overfilled the tranny so you know not the end of the world. We don't have a leak. We literally just overfilled it because we have nothing to tell us whether it's full or not. Um, so I need to order a dipstick for this. Probably need to order a distributor for that. Um, yeah. I need to order a windshield for the Chrysler. And I need to order the windshield at the same time from the same place for the 40. So I can pick them up at the turkey run. And yeah, kind of go from there. Um, so... That's kind of where we're at. Uh, tomorrow, I'm probably going to jack this up, the thing up, and put it on the dollies so that I can slide it over. Um, so I can actually back it out of the driveway because right now the Chrysler's right behind it in the air. <laughs> um, and get this out of here and get the 40 down on the ground and uh, outside so that I can go ahead and start sanding these doors. I need to get that done this week. Next, uh, the next four or five days are gonna be these doors. You guys know what I'm talking about. We're gonna sand them down, some of the clear popped. Pretty much, we're pretty sure it's because of the weather. Uh, we, the actual temperatures and stuff when we painted it. Um, we got a little issue here we gotta take care of. And uh, yeah. So otherwise, that's uh, that's what's on the agenda for this week is to order some parts, get these doors re sanded down, uh, repaired and uh, recleared, and then repaint that door. Um, is what's going to be happening here uh, in the next four or five days, and uh, then go from there. So yeah, we are back. We are excited to be back. It's so nice to be back home. Um, loved Rome, loved, loved Paris. Um, Paris is, you know, really a place that I, 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 I just adore. Um, I've been there four times now. I've probably spent three months in Paris now, total. But uh, love the city, love the people, love the food, love everything about France uh, for the most part. Um, but it was good to come home this time. And I think it had a lot to do with... I miss doing the videos with you guys and working on the cars and I, you know what I mean? It, it just, there was something to come home to, uh, as opposed to the other times it was just, you know, come home and go back to work and the grind and, you know, so really, really excited to get back into this. Um, we did, uh, have a discussion with, um, Let's get it. So, I think we're going to do another project here um, soon, soonish. Um, when I say soon, I mean in the next year. Um, and I know you're probably going, Jesus, you've got 50 projects. Why are you going to do another one? I agree. Um, but my um, my stepdaughter's boyfriend. Um, is just an incredible dude and uh, he's kind of had a rough go of things with life uh, with his family and whatnot have been a little rough and um, not gonna get into that but uh, he was promised a car a long time ago that uh, you know didn't uh, didn't come to fruition for him uh, not from us, but from someone else, from his dad. And uh, we're going to right the wrong. Um, so we got to talking in Rome, and I asked him, 
he's 22, I think, 21 or 22. And I asked him what his dream car is. What do you, what do you, if you could have any car in the world, what would it be, right? And we came up with uh, a 1965 Chevy Impala SS two-door coupe. Um, with a big block automatic uh, white with uh, probably a black or tan interior or something to that effect or something cool I, he, he wasn't big on the red interior so uh, probably not that but I think we're gonna do that I think we're gonna find one for him and uh, on his days off he wants to come over here and work on his car and I think we'll help him do that and we'll film it and bring you along for the ride and um, kind of do that whole thing. I, I, I did find a 65 Impala SS two-door coupe um, locally. Uh, I think it's like 3200 bucks or something. Um, that if it's still available when I'm ready to do it, then I might bring that one home. It's decent. Um, it's got a title. Um, got a lot of parts, frame's been sandblasted and taken care of already and all that kind of thing. So that might be a, a decent little starting point. Um, but I think we're going to build a 65 Impala SS, boys. Um, we're going to do this for John Cole, or Johnny as I call him. Um, and uh, should be should be fun, should be interesting, you know. Um, I look at this kid like a son, honestly. Um, they've been together for years and years and you know, I don't think he's going anywhere. So um, But the kid uh, He's just a good kid and you know He deserves it he works as he works his tail off every day, you know takes care of her takes care of my house my other house in Zephyr Hills and uh, you know just you would be hard-pressed to find a, a better human uh than this guy so i think we're gonna do this um i take that back i don't think we are gonna do this um so i think you know first of the year ish something to that effect we're going to uh really start putting pen to paper on that and seeing what we can come up with i need the thing to go away i need to get uh don's car done don's 57 done uh, before I even think about doing anything like that, um, I just don't have any room for another, you know, land yacht <laughs> to come over here. Uh, and I need the Chrysler to be kind of getting there. Um, so, that's where we're at. Sorry for the long video. Missed you guys. Um, but we, uh, we're going to hit this thing hard and heavy tomorrow. And, uh, and just keep coming, keep going. We, uh, really came back motivated so that's that's huge you know I uh, I hope you guys liked the videos that came out I did notice that one of them had green lines in it I'm so sorry I I did not watch it um, while I was over there I actually turned it on this morning it came on on my YouTube and I was like oh shit uh, I think it was one of the 44 ones when we bleeding the brakes but uh, and the kick down cable and all that but we'll reload that put it back up for you guys so you don't have to watch terrible videos <laughs> you can't even see um but thanks for watching please like and subscribe join us on our journey um we're over 1100 uh subscribers now and uh now we're just working on the watch hours to get monetized and that's going really well you guys are super helpful on that and uh you know i think uh i think something that might be coming down the road too is um my wife's been working on um <laughs> ideas for merch um she wants to get into that and uh which i think would be cool we'll do some hats shirts she had the browns rod and custom shirts she designed all that she designed the logo for browns rod and custom that's on the website and everything um that's on youtube and uh twitter not twitter um tiktok um but yeah i uh one of the big things i do want to do is a kind of a special edition run of i want to do a shirt for each car when we finish them right so the thing it'll have the thing on the back and maybe the logo has the thing on it instead of the the flame model a and it might have some kind of saying or something you know and uh, i think some of you guys might like that 
as much as you've watch these videos and the build and everything else so <coughs> same with hats and that kind of thing so she's got all the stuff here to do it um see what happens um but uh, that's something that might be coming down the road here just keep that in mind let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in um so anyway guys thanks for watching brown's rod and custom please uh Please continue to help and pray for the people affected by this hurricane. Um, we're good, but, you know, five miles away, they're not good. Their whole lives have been changed. Um, and I, you know, you just look at these things, and, you know, it'll, it works itself out eventually, you know, but a lot of people lost everything they got. Um, but I think a lot of them got away with their lives, so that, that's good. But... Other than that, it, it was pretty much total loss. So, um, keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, if you guys are down here, need anything, uh, if you're affected by this, you know, you need something, need help, reach out to me. I'll see what I can do. Um, I've got a lot of friends, me and Ron, you know, we can, we can figure something out probably. So, yeah. And I know up there in, in North Carolina and Georgia, you guys got just tore up too, which, you know, I'm, I'm just now starting to get into that and seeing all the videos and stuff, and that's incredible. <coughs> we had a lot of, I've been down to Asheville quite a bit. Uh, I've been through Asheville, going to Myrtle Beach and stuff uh, my whole life. And um, to see I-40 washed out like that, and I mean, oh my God. Some of the videos, it's, it's insane. So anyway, um, you guys are in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, we hope everything uh, works out for you. If there's anything we can do, please reach out. We'll do what we can. We'll be back at you tomorrow, and uh, we'll be bringing you thing content. Have a good one, guys.